Welcome everybody to our one o'clock session. Our session right now is going to be on technology, solving the digital divide, and we have some incredible speakers. We're really excited to have them talk about that issue and how they've solved it. Um, before we start though, I wanted to tell you about a little bit more about Austin Up. And so Austin Up is a nonprofit. And uh, we are really our work is to help make Austin a senior friendly city. And we do that by partnering with nonprofits, with government and with businesses. And one of the things that we specialize in is education. And we have a couple of different educational opportunities each year. And one of them is this event. This is the Aging and Technology Summit that you are attending right now. Um, excuse me, I always say technology. Aging and Innovative Summit. And that's what you're attending right now. And our big sponsor is AARP. And we're so thankful for them. We have some other sponsors. They are WellMed, Ryan, and Cummings Home Team. They have all adopted a session. You'll hear about a little bit more about each of those businesses at the session that they adopted. Next, we have Oasis Senior Living, Assisted Hands Home Care, Senior Resource Guide, and Buck our village. We could not have put on this event without their help. It helped to pay for our special speakers, um, marketing, and coordination. So again, we thank all the sponsors very much. Um, so Austin Up is a nonprofit, and one of the other things that we do is we have been holding a forum. It's called the Age-Friendly Austin Forum, and this forum was to put a spotlight on the efforts that Austin Up um, well, it's to put a, a, really a spotlight on the efforts that many people have done to make city, the city of Austin an age-friendly city. Kind of mumbling around with my words there. Sorry about that. Um, so we've been doing these forum series for the past year. Our last one is going to be December 9th and it's on social participation. So we take these different, I call them pillars, um, to make the city more friendly, age-friendly. And we've been talking about those each month. So December is going to be on social participation. And we have some great speakers. The first one is the city of Austin. Their park and rec director is going to be coming and talking about the programs for older adults. So we're really excited. They, during COVID, they had to completely retool. And it's really interesting what they came up with. And we think that they're really exciting programs. So that's one example of how they're trying to make Austin a better city for aging adults. Uh, in addition, we're going to have a speaker. Her name is Amy Temperley, and she's going to be talking about lots of different programs that can help seniors with social participation. It's extremely important for our seniors to not be isolated socially. And she has some great ideas. She has a new program. It's a calendar. And you can go to one calendar and find out all the events going on in the city. How wonderful is that? So she'll also be talking. That's going to be held on December 9th, and the time will be from 1 to about 3.30. So if you're interested in that, you can go to our website and you can register for that. We hope that you will. Okay, so that is information about upcoming events. Um, what I'd like to do now is talk about the sponsor who sponsored the event. It happens to be my company. So it's kind of embarrassing to read about my company, but here we go. Uh, Cummings Home Team. So um, I have a degree in business administration. I'm a former employee with Nike, Microsoft, and Apple Computer. And I've enjoyed an extensive marketing background to your advantage when you're buying and selling homes. Oh gosh, this is so long. There's no way I'm going to read all this. Basically, I'm a realtor. I help people when they're transitioning from their home uh, to move to a smaller home or into senior living communities. I have an ancillary business. It's a move management business, which helps you with the move and your things. That's where we find most people get stopped. They just can't figure out how to uh, not necessarily get rid of their things, but to not have their items move with them to the next place. So we help them make donations, uh, help getting items to family, and also help them get set up with estate sales and things like that. So anyway, I'm not gonna read that whole thing, but we do have a packet of information that will be sent out in a follow-up email. And in the packet of information, you'll get information about all the speakers, our sponsors, and uh, more information like that. So be looking for that information if you wanna read that big long thing. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to bring our speakers in. So we have Cami and we have Sylvan. Hey, Cami. Hello. You look great. Lighting is perfect. You've got this down. I'm a day. No problem. Well, Cami, um, we're going to wait for Sylvan. Sylvan, you can come on in too. Oh, we can't hear you. You're muted. Okay. I thought okay. you were. Oh, you can control that on your end. I wasn't sure. Well, I probably could, but I can't figure out how to do all this. You have to be a DJ, I think, to figure yeah. out all the technology <laughs> part of it. Well, welcome. Let me just. 
do a short bio for each of you. So Cami is the executive director and co-founder of the Community Tech Network. And Cami is the um, founder, actually, of the Community Tech Network, a nonprofit with a mission to transform lives through digital literacy. With 20 years of experience working in the public sector, Cami has developed a passion for helping people gain access and better, better utilize technology after witnessing firsthand how the digital divide and low literacy levels were aiding the cycle of poverty. She has worked for the City of New York Department of Parks and Rec, managed 27 public access, oh my goodness, computing centers, teaching computer classes and establishing their volunteer trainer program. As the training and outreach manager for TechSoup Global, Tammy greatly expanded her knowledge and understanding of the nonprofit technology field, having conducted over 200 interviews with librarians and producing over 100 webinars. You rock. <laughs> She's founding member of the National Digital Inclusion Alliance and speaks nationally about digital inclusion. We just, I can't believe you're here in Austin, first yeah. off. We're so lucky to have you here with your background, and we're super excited to hear more about your programs. Um, but before we get into that, let me introduce Sylvan. Sylvan is a computer lab contractor and senior connect administrator at Age of Central Texas, and he um, has worked as a volunteer and staff for senior access and has recently joined Age of Central Texas to develop a flexible technology learning strategy for older adults. Sylvan coordinates the day-to-day -day administration of the Senior Connect program, including communication with community partners for referrals, recruiting, managing, and assigning trainers, and managing the data, status updates, and reporting. So welcome, Sylvan and Cammie. Cammie, we're so excited that you're here. So you've got a big old presentation and you, of course, are ready to go. So I'm going to go off screen and our format will be, you'll just go ahead and go through your presentation. I'll monitor the question and answer in the chat. If it's something I feel like needs to be answered right there, do you mind if I interject and ask you the question? Yeah, if it's really pressing, we can also just keep them to the end. I okay, would not run out of time if we inject too many questions. That sounds great. Okay, I'm going to go off camera. Take it away. Great. Well, thank you so much for organizing this presentation it is an important topic, especially after COVID or we're still in the thick of it. We now know that people need access at home and there are still many who lack the access, especially older adults. So this presentation um, <clears throat> is something I've given parts of it. Sylvan and I have, have spoken together, uh, but we've kind of combined a couple of different presentations to share a little bit about our work. So we're gonna take a little time to introduce ourselves. Well, <laughs> we've already gotten a lovely introduction, so we can skip over that side, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about the data that we know about the digital divide, specifically as it impacts older adults. And then I'll talk about Community Tech Network. Sylvan will talk about Age of Central Texas. I'll talk about the Aging Services Council and their social inclusion task force. Sylvan will talk about the Senior Connect program. And then we'll, before we do Q&A, I will share some ideas of what you can do to get seniors connected. So with that, there's us. <laughs> now I'm gonna talk about the need. So the need for older adults to be connected. Here is a, a graph from the uh, Pew Internet that they have done very recently on who's connected. And it's showing this jump in the number of people who say they do not use the internet. So 25% of people 65 and older. And this is nationwide. It differs based off of rural versus urban. And of course, economics play a factor as well. But older adults are more are, are less likely to be online. And we know that, but it is proven through this uh, through this study. Also, the uh, American Community Survey also shows that there's fewer number of older adults subscribing to home broadband um, that uh, just within Texas, we have 67.6% uh, .6 of Texas households have broadband. So if you look at the whole state, not just older adults, uh, it lags behind other states as it pertains to home broadband. And partly that has to do with the state is enormous and there's lots of parts of the state that aren't, well, aren't populated very heavily. And the internet service providers won't go laying infrastructure out where they can't recoup their costs. So uh, it, connectivity is a big old issue, not something we're going to dive into today. But I always like to start my presentations helping people understand the need that we're meeting. Here's a screen grab of a really awesome tool if you're a data geek 
I'm becoming more of one. Here's a really awesome tool you should check out, i3connect.org. It's free. You can visualize a bunch of different data sets together. Here's one of just Austin, and you can see the division. Um, it does align with income levels, but that there are parts of town that just aren't as well connected as other towns. So if you are working on a proposal and data like this is useful, know that this free tool exists. Now I'm going to talk about Community Tech Network. My, uh, I say it's my first baby. My second baby is nine years old and he's in school right now. But I did help found uh, Community Tech Network as an independent nonprofit. It started with uh, TechSoup, where I had worked back in 2006. And I helped to get its 501c3 in 2008. And since that time, we've uh, expanded quite a bit. But our mission is to transform lives through digital literacy. And we deliver our programming entirely through partnerships. So you'll hear more about the partnership we have with AGE as we go through this presentation. But we have over 70 partners across the country. Most of them are in the Bay Area where we started in the San Francisco Bay Area. But we do have partners that we're serving in New York State and here in Texas. And we're having conversations with other folks across the country. So uh, because of COVID, nonprofits are seeing more and more of their clients aren't connected at home. And so those nonprofits are coming to us saying, help us. So it's an exciting time for CTN. And unfortunately, it took a pandemic to make that happen. But we do provide training in English, Spanish, Chinese, Russian, Vietnamese, Korean, and Tagalog, that we find that it's critical, especially when working with older adults, that the training happens in the language that they're most comfortable reading, speaking. So the tablets or the, the uh, devices they use will be set up in the language that they're most comfortable. And the types of training we offer is twofold. Direct services where our volunteers or paid staff are directly serving the learners and then capacity building, which I'll talk about in a second. So directly serving adults of all ages. So we don't just work with adults. We are working with low-income housing developments and providing support to parents so that they can connect with schools or job seekers so they can apply for jobs. So really there's this huge gap for basic digital, uh, basic and intermediate digital literacy skills. Not, not everybody knows how to click and drag or upload a file or export a Word document as a PDF. So this is all like, woo. some people are just like, I don't. And maybe you're thinking, I need to take the computer class. Every time I say what I do, I mean, I would say 50% of the time I tell people what I do. I help people learn how to use the internet. I could take your class. I need help. So we all need help. I need help too. I just happen to know how to search for help and watch videos and I have pretty good internet and all of that. There's a lot of the folks we're serving don't know how to use a help menu or watch a YouTube video and many don't have devices or internet. So, so that's really what we're trying to do is help people over that digital divide. But our curriculum has been developed for Android tablets, iPads, Chromebooks, that's mainly, mainly the work that we're doing with parents and schools, and then Windows 10 computers. Um, but the, the how the work happens is either one-on-one -on -one or in a group session, either virtually or in person. So we've only always done digital literacy and then, since the, and, and then also helping people with devices and internet. So this is our thing, this is all we do, and we couldn't do it without partners like Asia Central Texas. So that's where we're talking about capacity building. So we, uh, because of the, um, I've been saying because of the pandemic, but yeah, because of the pandemic, we launched a brand new program, which I'll talk about in a minute. And um, an Age of Central Texas has taken, uh, has adopted that program. And so we're helping them through this capacity building work launch, well, they've already launched it. We've been doing it for almost a year now, uh, their own program. So we'll go dive deeper into that. But for other nonprofits, they may already have tablets, but they need curriculum. They may already have curriculum, but they have a new trainer who needs to be trained. So we're really taking what we've learned over the last 13 years and helping apply it to other agencies' work. Because what I want to see is that more agencies know how to address the digital divide in their communities. So I talked about Home Connect. So this is the program that we launched uh, last year. And um, so we have, these are the numbers of the people we've served since April of 2020. So it's a pretty big number of folks, especially if you look at those number of this, uh, devices that are distributed, over 526 devices. And this is just in San Francisco. 
Uh, we have other groups that we're starting to work with in the wider Bay Area, but uh, but these are just really impressive numbers. I'm super proud of the work that my team has done. It has not been easy because there's all sorts of the way that we structure the program is a little bit challenging, um, which Sylvan can talk about kind of how we're doing the program when he gets to his slides. Um, but that's our Home Connect program. And we have captured pre and post data to show the change specifically on loneliness and feelings of isolation, because one of our key funders said, this is important. We wanna know the change in their feelings of isolation. So in our pre and post, we're seeing a big jump in feeling less lonely. And then also their abilities to do things like search for health information and connect with their family and access classes and other activities. We're seeing a huge jump in all these activities. And then the them using the internet more regularly, that this is showing that on a daily basis after the program, at, after six months, there's many more people using the internet daily than before. So that's just some of the data that we've collected on the Home Connect program and how we do the work. And now I'm going to pass it over to Sylvan for his part of the presentation. Thanks, Tammy. That was good. Um... So um, I work with Age of Central Texas. I've been with them now since about March, uh, specifically with you know the Senior Connect program, but also, um, which I'll talk about in a minute, Age has a computer lab. Uh, some of the things that Age is um, is doing right now, uh, you know, their their main purpose. Uh, they have an adult daycare, health uh, healthcare. Uh, they provide caregiver education, which is very important for those that uh, you know are caregiving for their parents or, or others. Uh, early memory loss support, um, health equipment lending, and then resources. So that you know you could. Oh, we talked about that, didn't we, Cami? <laughs> especially with older adults and to navigate through that process. Uh, next slide. So then uh, my main my main purpose though is, and one of the uh, things that the uh, age has is a computer lab. And it is a uh, peer-based computer, uh, you know, a lab. So it's a, a physical lab where we have equipment and um, audio visual equipment which pre-pandemic, we actually held, you know, classes for older adults and taught them how to, you know, do, do certain things. We've had clubs that were specifically designed to um, help uh, older adults with like photography classes and, you know, there's several different offerings. Obviously, uh, with the pandemic, all that got shut down. Uh, so we have this facility and it's just sitting there and nobody's using it. Um, I was kind of brought in to kind of reimagine, you know, how this the lab might might go in the future, um, as when things got shut down, the clubs and some of the uh, basically went virtual and uh, just like everybody else, and they kept uh, they kept doing that, um, but but through Zoom and and um, other programs, and uh, which what I'm trying to do is uh, one of the things that I'm I'm. Uh, my job is all about is taking that computer lab concept kind of out into the community. So we are, um, you know, partnering with uh, retirement communities to figure out how we can uh, provide kind of that mobile lab experience and be able to uh, provide the uh, uh, digital skills that some of their residents might, might need. Through uh, special, you know, special classes, uh, how-to classes, those kind of things, and then the other uh, part of the Age Lab is the Senior Connect. So Senior Connect kind of got brought in under since I was kind of administrating it. It's a it's a stall part of the Age Lab um, moving forward. Great. So now I'm going to take over. Sylvan's going to talk about Senior Connect in a minute, and he'll give you all the details about that program. But we wouldn't be here today if it weren't for Aging Services Council. So I did want to give them 
uh, recognition for their role that they played. So the uh, Aging Services Council is a, a group of agencies that come together monthly and try to solve some issues that are related specifically to older adults. So one of the issues that boiled up after COVID was how do people get connected to the internet at home and how are they doing the things that we're all assumed we need to just go order your groceries online. Well, what happens if you're not connected? So they created a social inclusion task force and I joined it and was very happy to meet Suzanne Anderson, the executive director of Age of Central Texas and Sarita Lacoste, who is the executive director of uh, Senior Access. And through that partnership, we launched uh, Senior Connect as a pilot. But we wouldn't have met again if it weren't for this task force and specifically this technology needs assessment that was uh, conducted back, I think, in May of 2020. So you'll be getting a copy of this deck and you'll have a link to this survey if you want to check it out. But whenever doing, whenever we're working with new partners, we always start with the need, which I did on this presentation, but knowing the need through collecting the data through a survey is always a great idea just to know for sure what the need is and then you, you have somewhat of a baseline to use. So some of the questions in the survey helped us understand that the seniors wanted mobile technology, they wanted access to the internet home, that they were basic or intermediate level users, and they wanted someone to train them on how to use the device in their home, and they were interested in free training if it could be provided over the phone. So this is all really great information that made its way into what Senior Connect is today. And so with that, I'm gonna pass it back over to Sylvan. So Senior Connect is um, kind of Tammy went over the you know Home Connect uh, some of the Home Connect uh, program and it's basically modeled off of that. Uh, we've uh, you know they want to reinvent the wheel here, so there's a lot of uh, uh, process and forms and just things that were already set. We tweaked them a little bit, um, you know, to make them uh, maybe a little bit more uh, uh, compatible with with uh, with age. Um, but for the most part, um, a lot of it's uh, very similar. Um, it serves for, right now just the central Texas area. So that's uh, Austin and suburbs. We, we go, uh, we've had gone all the way out to Smithville and um, of course Georgetown and um, you know, Round Rock, Wigerville, that area. Uh, we've and that's through local partners. So several uh, folks, I think we had like nine or ten of them um, that were that we relied on. Folks like um, uh, Meals on Wheels, Senior Elder Care, uh, or Family Elder Care, Senior Access. Several of those folks, because they're the ones that are closest to their, you know, the types of clients that we're kind of looking for. And as part of that, it's it's much easier to go through them, and they know they know their clients. They know who might you know benefit from this type of program, and that's worked very well. Uh, right now, we're providing training in English, Spanish, Chinese, Mandarin, Cantonese, and Korean. Uh, there's a potential for Vietnamese also. We have uh, we have a. Uh, a partner that's representing most of the Asian community, and they're they're looking for that. Uh, we're just looking for some trainer, a trainer that can can do that. Uh, one of the things that when we first started, uh, we really relied on CTNs for you know the trainers because they have a stable of trainers. Um, I think at, you know at some point we decided, hey, let's you know we're going to transition this to age, and so we started advertising for trainers and. And so most, I guess all we have, a, you know, approximately 10 trainers now. Um, there's a few that we still rely on with CTNs, uh, especially for the language. Um, sometimes we're, we don't have enough, uh, say Chinese, you know, trainers. We have, we have one or two and sometimes we need more. So um, Trainers are generally assigned three to four learners. Again, these are, you know, contract, under contract. It's kind of part-time, and it depends on what else that they're, they're up to. Uh, and all of these trainers were kind of screened to be, uh, you know, folks that really have a passion for working with older adults. Um, several used to work with age for, um, at, you know, when it was, 
when it was for the lab doing um, uh, volunteer work. Uh, since that kind of shut down, they were they had time on their hands to help help with this. So so they were already um, used to training and just had to kind of learn the curriculum. So that worked out real well. Um, so learners uh, basically receive a custom figured tablet. We try to make the uh, the tablet look the same for everybody for training purposes, plus a uh, a 70 page, you know, highly illustrated. Uh, training booklet that uh, CTN folks have put together that um, has a lot of information and, and resources for the learner to be able to just kind of uh, look through as a reference and also some ideas on things that they can uh, continue learning on. Uh, trainers meet virtually with the learner, so we are, it is virtual classes. Uh, what's nice is we're able to connect directly to their tablet. And so the trainer can see exactly what they're seeing and help them out that way. That's worked very well. Um, in most instances, that's, you know, that's, a, that's adequate. And we try to kind of point them to, to things that if they get stuck, at least we're seeing where, you know, where the problem is and can help them out. Uh, generally it's, uh, so there's five hours of lessons. And uh, generally, it's seven to eight hours per learner. There's some administrative, there's some forms, surveys, little things like that that come up. Sometimes they, they run over, but that, on average, it takes about seven to eight hours to, to, uh, per learner. Uh, our goal was to try to get them through in about three weeks, but never work. You know, some of them, it doesn't work out. They have doctor's appointments, things get uh, rescheduled. So three, three to four weeks is a pretty good, uh, pretty good average year to, uh, to complete the course. And of course, once the learner has successfully gone through the, the five lessons, uh, they, they can keep the tablet. So part of, the, part of the, their training or their commitment is if you go through this, then you get, the, you get the tablet. And uh, the other part is to try to assist them on signing up for you know, low, uh, lower cost internet or the emergency broad, broadband benefit. Um, we, as part of, if the learner himself does not have internet access currently, we you know, put a, a T-Mobile SIM card, so just like a tel telephone, so they can have access at least through the, uh, um, the lessons and you know, maybe a month or so afterwards. And then we try to see how we can best uh, help them to either get, you know, Wi-Fi broadband, or see if they qualify for the uh, EBB program. Um, I think that's about it for that. Um, so, with it in the Central Texas itself, from the beginning, I think the uh, pilot started uh, around February of uh, of this year. Uh, with through the partners, we've uh, you know received 150 uh, referrals total. Uh, we've about 90 uh, older adults have gone through the uh, the training. Uh, we're currently training about 25, and we have a waiting list. So part of the issue is just having enough trainers available to be able to to meet the demand, and as they uh, finish up with their uh, their learners, then I assign them more. So right now we have a little bit of a waiting list, but we're going going through it as fast as we can. Patricia here on the left is uh, one of the uh, learners that we did a story on. She was a fascinating story. She used to be a uh, Motown singer and actually has a really beautiful voice and she was really interested in learning how to get on YouTube and make videos for her church and do some, do some singing. And so uh, she went through the program and was very excited. And now, and, and we hooked her up with a uh, digital coach that was, had some experience in developing vi uh, YouTube videos. And uh, every time I talk to her, I kind of catch up with her every month or so, and she's going strong and, She's making videos. So one of the things that she really uh, pointed out that she grew up, you know, during the, 
you know, 50s and 60s and just missed all that because she was raising a family. And now she's able to go back through YouTube and and check out all that history. And she thinks that's just really exciting. Next, uh, is this, I'll take this one too. Um, so the ideal participant for the program is obviously an older adult. It's uh, really designed for 60 and above. Uh, generally lives alone um, and has a uh, you know a desire you know to learn a technology and motivated to do so and may or may not or has you know limited access to to internet and working with our partners um, we are referrals with that's who you know when we communicate with them we're looking for those type of clients that they may have now we do get others that you know, have, they just don't have, have either low income, don't have the, the money, you know, to be, uh, to buy tablets or anything like that. But they do have a little bit of experience and, and do, you know, do have some knowledge. And so it that kind of goes through the, through, through the whole gamut there, but that's really what we're trying to focus on. As far as the uh, program workflow here, so the way it works is uh, the partner again makes a referral to age. Uh, we make a call. Oops. Where's your slide? Uh, we kind of we uh, generally so this doesn't happen all the time for age because what I've done is I've tried to get the trainers to make that initial contact and verify their information. Uh, but from time to time, I'll make the call and make and, and verify it. Um, so, and then we kind of, the verification that we really need is to make sure we have the right address, telephone number to reach them at, and whether or not they have internet access, because that determines whether or not I send them a tablet with a SIM card or, or just a, a hook up to Wi-Fi. And it also allows the trainer to kind of get a sense of what their um, their need is and what their level of, of experience is so that they can start thinking about how they're to approach, uh, tr approach the training class. So I think it's a good way of introducing themselves and make sure they, they're, they're kind of on the same page in terms of how they're going to approach the, uh, the lessons. Uh, the virtual training begins. Again, it's generally one hour, uh, five one hour sessions. Um, we do a kind of a pre, the pre and post survey that uh, Cami referenced as part of that. And then at every, uh, every session, there's like a little, how did it go? Just kind of communicating. And if there's any issues that, um, again, as the administrator, if I need to kind of get involved, uh, a lot of times it'll be, uh, going through the referring partner and say, hey, one of your clients, you know, had an issue, or there's, if there's if there's something there, that's usually how, how uh, the process we go through. Um, as part of it, uh, as part of the training, the the, the trainer uh, tries to see what their in you know specific interests are and if they want to continue. Uh, with any um, with a one-on-one -on -one, uh, digital coach we're calling it and uh, usually that's focused on a specific uh, item like i mentioned patricia she really wanted to focus on making youtube videos so that's what that's what she focused on with the digital coach uh, some may want to get on social media and want somebody to kind of guide them through that or email or, you know, something, something specific. Um, and again, as part of the process, we, uh, we help the uh, senior enroll in low cost internet if it's available. Uh, we've got different areas are a little different. So we've done some research and seeing who provides, you know, discounts to seniors. And then with the uh, emergency broadband um, uh, that's a, a recent um, um, offering by the federal government, which I understand is changing a bit with the infrastructure plan, uh, but going through that process and helping the senior go through that process to see if they qualify 
And if so, uh, and that of course involves a lot of paper, uh, you know, some paperwork and things like that. Next. So in general, here's the, uh, this is the kind of the lesson plan, if you will. So uh, very basic, but to get them up to speed, computer vocabulary, you know, what's a cell phone, what's a tablet, what's, you know, computer, I mean, very basic stuff. What's the internet? Um, so some of the, some of the, these uh, older adults, you know, have just don't have an, really a good idea of what that's all about. So going through that, we go through, uh, you know, searching the internet, setting up an email or creating an email account if they don't have one. Um, and then we, uh, we focus a lot on online safety. So we know that once we, uh, you're online, then you gotta be careful what you, what you click on, what re, how you respond to emails and, and things to look out for. And then of course the camera, uh, using the camera, and uh, being able to do that and send it. And then uh, we also uh, you know, hook them up to Zoom so that they can uh, learn how to invite people for you know, a Zoom meeting and, and be able to participate in Zoom. And that, that one is, you know, that's definitely a popular one because once they're there, then they get to, you know, get to have Zoom, Zoom meetings with their families and, and friends and things like that. Great, so now we're gonna transition and give Sylvan a break to talk about what you can do. So since I don't know anything about those of you who are listening, I'm gonna make a few assumptions that maybe there's folks in your network that you'd like to help, or maybe there's a group that you're working with that might benefit from this information. So I'm gonna share some of the things that you can do, and then there's other resources at the end. So at the very least, you've, well, not at the very least, but one way of doing it, which you've heard right now, is the one-on-one -on -one virtual session. So that's how Senior Connect and Home Connect are being delivered. That is a phone call and uh, the use of two tools. One is TeamViewer and one is AnyDesk. Those are both tools that allow you to see the other person's uh, device. Yeah, they have to be preloaded. So the tablets that go out are preloaded with both TeamViewer and AnyDesk. We use them. Um, Kind of interchangeably, but but and there's other there are, there are other apps installed on the tablet as well. But that's how the trainer and the how the the trainer is able to see the learner screen while the learner is looking at their booklet. So that's the one on one session. It could be delivered through Zoom. The challenge with using Zoom is how do you help them get signed up for Zoom in the first place, as Sylvan mentioned. So if if you're going to do Zoom, uh, understand that it'll take them a while to get used to it, and then how do you show them on Zoom something that you want them to then practice and toggling back and forth between Zoom and then the thing that they're learning can be challenging. So if they have a third, if they have another device, then they could use that device to watch the Zoom uh, session while doing it on their other device. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but if they, if they have two devices, it's ideal that they're learning on one device that they watch and doing the work on the device that they're working on. So they don't have to toggle back and forth because they often just shut everything down. They get frustrated or confused. Um, but then there's also small group virtual sessions. So this image here is an example of a small group session that's happening with a couple of learners. The trainer from CTN is on the left and then the TA from our partner Center for Elders Independence is on the right, who is helping kind of behind the scenes with the two learners. So this is a very small group. I don't think they intended it there to be two people. I think it was more of a four to six person class where a few people didn't show up and that happens. But to do it in a group session, obviously you can help more people at once, but you also have the added benefit of the learners interacting with each other, which can help with feeling isolated and building more ties with, uh, with new people. So, um, or it could go badly and you've got one learner who is especially chatty or uh, challenging in other ways. So group dynamics, are something to think about when delivering group sessions, both in person and virtually. Uh, so <clears throat> sharing information about EBB, so Sylvan mentioned this, it is changing. It's becoming the um, Affordable Connectivity Program at the beginning of the year. And some of the 
benefits change slightly, more information for that, there's a link in this presentation. But you can tell people about this. So it's essentially right now it's $50 uh, stipend or a subsidy, it's going to be 30. But still, that's a good chunk of dough for some people that may make it possible for them to afford the internet. There's the trade-off, trade Tammy, is that it, the requirements have, inc uh, have softened. In other words, you can qualify at a higher income. So that's exactly. Kind of so there's some groups like um, AT&T and Charter Spectrum have low, low cost internet options, but you have to qualify. You have to be eligible. And that usually means being on certain uh, benefits programs. So you have to prove your eligibility. So what Selvin is saying is that more people are eligible for the emergency broadband benefit, but it's paperwork. It's stuff to understand. So I, I get that that wouldn't be top of your list, but somebody, if you are working with a lot of low income individuals or individuals who aren't already connected to the internet, they should know about the emergency broadband benefit benefit so that they can at least explore it as an option for themselves. You can also work on getting devices to loan out, uh, such as tablets or hotspots. Partner with the libraries. They often are already doing this. There's a wait list, of course. There's more of a need than there are devices available. But if this is something you could build into a future grant that you're writing or partner with a company who has a surplus of tablets sitting around, I don't know, that never happens. But you, you never know. I have actually interacted with schools that had tablets that were older on the older side sitting collecting dust. So there's there's resources out there. You just need to go and find them. So if you want to do that and loan them out, then how do you ensure to get them back? And do you really want to loan them or do you want to give them away after the learner has gone through a certain number of hours of training like the Senior Connect program? So lots of options, lots of decisions to make. And then I already mentioned the libraries, but there might be nonprofits that you could partner with. So Age of Central Texas is already providing training on site at other locations around Austin. I know Austin Freenet does that type of work as well. Uh, what Community Tech Network does is more of the capacity building and offering curriculum that organizations like Age utilize. We're not doing in-person training in Austin. We're only doing that in the Bay Area. Um, but you can also utilize volunteers as trainers, which Sylvan mentioned. They're calling theirs just like we call our virtual trainers uh, digital coaches or our, our volunteers are digital coaches. Call them whatever you want. There's a lot of smart people out there who want to give their time. We just always background check our volunteers and make sure they get some kind of training so they really truly understand how to work with older adults, what some of the challenges are that older adults face when getting online. And not to assume that they know all of this jargon that Sylvan was talking about. So there's a bunch of training that we provide all of our trainers. So those are just some ways I'm sure you guys are like, this is on your to-do list, what I'm going to do tomorrow. But um, I have a webinar. There's a link here to one that I've conducted a couple of times that is specifically on what you can, connecting the unconnected. So I go deeper into internet devices and training. And I talk for a whole hour just on this topic. But the other resources you can look into are the National Digital Inclusion Alliance, NDIA. I was, I'm on the board, so I love this agency. It's really a remarkable resource for anyone in the country who is working at all on helping people get connected. So we, what we didn't talk about was what is digital inclusion? It's devices, internet, and training, and really helping, to, to helping people connect all three. And then there's great resources like Senior Planet, which is a national agency, but they have a presence in San Antonio. Cyber Seniors has online uh, training, like uh, webinars and other great resources, as does Senior Planet. Lots of great free stuff for older adults to interact with. Everyone On is a tool that you can use to search by zip code what low-cost internet is eligible for that zip code. PCs for People, a national nonprofit that has low-cost devices for purchase that they refurbish. And then they also help connect you to low cost internet through hotspots from Mobile Beacon. Uh, and then lastly, we talked about the emergency broadband benefit, which will be turning into the affordable connectivity program. And with that, we're going to pause for questions and Wait. I'm gonna stop sharing so that I can uh, better see my screen. 
Great. And I've got a couple questions here. Let me just ask, I'll kind of work from the bottom here. So this is a great question. And it is, in addition to providing the digital equipment, are there trusted service providers for those who already have equipment? Do you have a catalog of people that you could call for help if you need help with your printer or like that? Sylvan, do you have any local? Uh, let me try to understand the question. So, so basically, understand? yeah, somebody already has a computer. They just need some assistance. So who would they go to? Do you have any trusted well, providers? That's, that is basically the age lab model, right? That's what we're trying to develop. So what we're doing is, so the, the Senior Connect program was a great avenue to, to, to really get, understand how to do the virtual training and be able to, you know, get that experience for the trainers and see how that's done. And that, that you know, everything's kind of built in, the tablet and the curriculum and all those kind of things. Well, now that we, we have some, we have trainers that are experienced in that or, you know, and volunteers uh, in, in doing that, we're developing, you know, kind of standalone classes or other classes, which pre-pandemic is kind of what the age lab was doing, offering, um, you know, how-to classes on technology. And we had instructors and, you know, curriculum and things like that. So now we're doing, we're revamping that, but more virtually and specific, uh, you know, at facilities, kind of the mo the uh, the mobile, you know, computer lab kind of concept. And we're developing all, a lot of that as we speak. So we have a few uh, contracts with a, with a couple uh, of facilities and we're in the process of developing classes specifically for their needs. So, so we're, we're being a little bit more, instead of offering classes and then seeing who, who's interested, we're actually asking, okay, what types of technology needs or, you know, how to's do you need, you know, iPhone 101, um, you know, what, what's the internet, you know, what is the internet, you know, those kind of things. So we're, so we're gathering that information so that we can prioritize uh, classes. So again, there's a few, uh, few out there doing it. Age is doing it through the Age Computer Lab. That's the concept, Austin Freenet. Um, you know, there's a few others out there. And we're partnering with Austin Freenet just on the digital coaching side of things because of the, they have a lot of volunteers so we're kind of doing it both ways. We're, we're, we're going to, we are recruiting for volunteers to, to be able to do that. But in the meantime, we don't want some of our learners to be sitting for months waiting for somebody if there's a resource available. And we have the, the, uh, the demand, right, through the Senior Connect program. So it's, it kinda, it's kind of a, a mutual, uh, mutual thing there. I don't know if that answers the question, but. And the libraries are a great resource as Library, well. Libraries, yes. And it's yes. just the challenge of when do we go in person? What can we deliver virtually? And how likely is it for groups, for individuals to engage in an online training? Sure, they may have a device or internet, but do they have the confidence to log into Zoom? So at least having a nonprofit partner who can help them get on Zoom for the first time and get a little confidence so they don't feel so insecure, like they're going to do something and look stupid in front of their peers so that they can really enjoy that Zoom class. Um, but again, back to the thing I was saying earlier about having a separate screen, if you're going to learn, say, Excel, it's challenging to do that toggle. Um, having a separate device is ideal. There's also kind of a lot of stuff online already. If you can watch a video, pause it, go practice. If you're that type of learner and you have the patience, enormous amount of resources online. Uh, Learnfree.org is one that I use a ton. And Digital Learn is another. These aren't in my deck. I'll try to pop them in the chat. But okay, great. that type of online learning isn't for everybody because if you have a question, you kind of get stuck. So it's nice to have a human to ask it the is and get it answered immediately so you can just keep going. I agree. 
and older adults like the interaction. I mean, that is kind of what the they mm -hmm. you know they want that they're isolated already. They they can't get get out much. Some of them, so having that connection and being able to is, is kind of what they're looking for. So right. Yeah, you can always find a lot of this stuff on YouTube and on the internet, but that's not that's not necessarily meeting everyone's needs. Correct. Do the tablets have built-in assistive technology for visual vision or mobile impurities? So when yes, you hand out yes, the tablets. Yes. Then... So basically the uh, a little more detail on the tablets, they're Android based. Okay. You, know, you have you have the iPhone, you have Apple. And then we have Android. Well, we went with Android, it's a little cheaper. And it's got a lot of the, it's basically Google, but, you know, that's the operating system. And so it's got a lot of technology built in for, um, for the hearing impaired, for the you know, visual impaired. We had, uh, we had one that was a, um, um, you know, blind person going through the, the program. And basically the, the tablet would talk to them. You know, and that's oh, I love it. Really good. So it's got it's got all of that capability. Now, again, I'm not an expert at that, but you know, we do have a couple of trainers that have dealt with it, so they have a little little background and know how to set it up and or help it, help help them set it up. That's great. Does the any of your training include Apple Watches and Alexa devices too? Well, eventually they will. So that lab, you know, uh, we're working with a with a uh, you know retirement community where most of them they told me are mostly Apple. You know, they have iPhones and iPads. So okay. we're going to be we're going to be probably developing some training specifically for the Apple um, devices and you know whatever else comes up. we we it's like one of those things that we haven't created them. We're waiting for. We're trying to we're trying to des decide you know prioritize what the the need is and Alexa hasn't come up yet but that doesn't mean it won't. So I was interested about the mobile labs. Are they going to be tablets? How many are there? Is it a van? Do you drive up and they get on? How how does that look? What does it look like? No, I guess I guess maybe I mischaracterize it. What we're doing is you know we have a a, a computer lab that's kind of that in house facility where you have the the tablet the uh the computer and the trainer and it's you've got to get to get there so the concept now is just take that concept and take it to a facility that already has say a you know audio visual equipment and and have the you know the the class there and they bring their own tablets or we can okay. maybe loan out you know loan out equipment so we're looking at all that so okay. making that in-house, you know, lab facility and moving it to to closer to where the the learner is. Right. And and, and a lot of these um, uh, facility, you know, communities have a conference room that they can, you know, have to project, you know, hook up a computer. The the trainer can be anywhere. You know, it can be through Zoom, just kind of like what we're doing now. Oh, okay. And and, um, and teach a class. And okay. then you have several, you know, adults, 10, 15 uh, residents, learn, you know, being trained. Or they could be sitting in their in their room on their on their tablet and going through the same training. And so we're so trying to people, make it very, very um, flexible. So people will bring their own computers. It, right now, that's the way that's what we're trying to set up. But what we're looking in, at, into is having kind of that mobile lab. So we have equipment that we can either loan out, you know, for the classes and or use for, uh, for that mobile kind of mobile lab concept. I also had a question about the devices. And so um, it sounds like you've been creative on where you get the devices. So you went to some schools and they gave you some things. Who else is giving you the actual devices and are they new or are they used? Is it a whole variety? Yeah, Tammy can speak to that. Okay. Yeah, these devices are all brand new purchased through grants that we've Oh, got. wow. And at the beginning of Home Connect, when we were like, ah, what's going on? We were scooping up tablets from any direction that we could find it. There was a huge demand and so we couldn't find them. 
So we're getting three from Walmart, two from Amazon, five from Best Buy, and it was administratively a headache because we wanted to track which tablets came from which location. So if we needed to return them, we would know how to do that. So popping down serial numbers, serious pain in the neck. So fast forward to we're more organized. We're working through Lenovo and purchasing Lenovo tablets through them. Okay. You know, like we're buying in bulk, trying to get the lowest cost possible. The range has been from at lowest 125 for these 10 inch, really nice tablets, all the way up to closer to 200 when, and now with the supply chain issues and computer chip shortages, the prices are starting to sneak up again. But mm -hmm. Tablets we've been using for Senior Connect are not Lenovo, which are Wi-Fi only. We've chosen to use a type of tablet that has a SIM card slot so that if folks need the internet, we put a SIM card in there through T-Mobile, ship it to them. They have internet through the device. Once they get their own internet, then we uh, turn that SIM card off and it can stay in there. It's just that we're not having to pay for the internet anymore. And then we apply that line to another tablet. Stroke of brilliance, I gotta say. Um, but basically it's challenging to make it all work, but we're making it work. Sylvan's amazing and T-Mobile has been super great. So, um, so yeah, we're purchasing the tablet. We've also worked with this company, KBS Mobility. They've been great. They're a partner of T-Mobile. They've been, uh, they call it kidding. So they'll configure the tablet for us so that <laughs> Sylvan doesn't have them laid out on his living room table trying to <laughs> Like Which for the pilot, that. that's the way it was. I was doing it. Uh, let me tell you, <laughs> I'd much rather somebody else. So now I just kind of turn it on, make sure it's, you know, there's sometimes a few little things that better off or, you know, forgot to pay, change the language. It's in British English instead of U.S. English and, you know, little things like that. But for the most part, it doesn't take me very long to check them out and ship them out. Um, are you working with senior centers? I know you talked about working with senior communities, so I'm assuming that's senior apartments and things like that. Have you reached out to senior centers, or do you feel like they have some other programs, so you don't need to? No, those are all on the table. So they're all on the table. Yeah, now that you know we've kind of reorganized and have a vision, that's all taking place or will be. Okay. Uh, we've uh, kind of reorganized the lab on kind of more external focus where before it was kind of its own little thing sitting over here but now I think we see the opportunity to to bring it there's folks that are out in the community and working with those facilities and things and so now they've got something to offer and we can start you know seeing what their needs are and being able so to if somebody worked at a senior center or went to a senior center and they were interested with who would they call to see if they could participate in the program well, in terms of the Senior Connect program, then basically they just need that. Uh, age can do that now. We had certain grants where it was kind of limited through some partners, but age could sign them up. So they just call age and say, hey, okay. they Great. don't want to participate. Our preference is to go ahead and keep going through some of these partners like uh, uh, Family Elder Care, Meals on Wheels, okay. some, some of the existing partners. So even if they call age, I would say, or senior senior access, I would, I would ask them, so do you belong to one of these groups? And if so, mm -hmm. then I'll let, I'll have them, them go through there. That way, um, you know, it's through, it's through somebody that they are, they're already uh, a client of. Okay, that makes sense. The way you uh, have the senior center itself, uh, part of what we're looking at is seeing if they want to sponsor, you know, have a class and they'll be, basically working with age or, you know, contracting with age to offer, um, you know, a curriculum. And then Excellent. anybody who belong, goes to that senior center can participate. So for the age computer labs in general, where do you see the synergies between the Senior Connect program and the lab initiative? Now we talked a lot about that. Now we have, we have experience with the, uh, you know, uh, virtual training. Um, we have trainers that are also slash volunteers. So some of them, you know, they're for the Senior Connect because it's a, you know, fairly uh, um, significant program, but some of them just want to do one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. training with somebody that needs help and they'll just volunteer to do that. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they have the experience through Senior Connect on how to do that is just really valuable. 
And so all of that coming together, you know, that we, we have the facilities, we have the curriculum, we have kind of a structure set up to do that outside of just Senior Connect. And so now when those opportunities come up, and especially on the back end of the Senior Connect uh, training, now they're looking for some more help or some more, uh, you know, digital learning. Mm -hmm. And that's where the, you know, the, the, la the, the other lab initiatives would, would come into play. What are the key challenges experienced with the Senior Connect program, would you say, right now? Well, from my perspective, administratively, <laughs> it's been, and Cammy probably has some challenges on, you know, her end, but administratively, it's getting in touch with the uh, learner in the first place. Oh, sure. um, if any, I know that I get all these telemarketers and people calling me. So now I'm assigning somebody that here's a kind of strange phone number uh -huh. and, you know, they're not answering it. A lot of them either don't have their email set up or they just don't know how to use their, their email, their not email uh, voicemail. So they don't even know, you know, they don't even know they call. So there's been a lot of times where I had to go back through the part, the, the, the partner and say, Hey, make sure that they see this number that they answer it or call them back. You know, can't get a hold of kind them. of the basic basic thing at the very beginning. Kind the of very stops basic you. thing that's been kind of a holdup. Um, uh, some of the we've had some tablet issues that you know can be mentioned. Uh, we've uh, you know we start out with a certain tablet. They've come up with. Uh, uh, we couldn't get those same tablets anymore. We get a new type tablet. It's got a little bit different. Feel. So now the trainer has to has to understand what the nuances are. Um, <clears throat> so those kind of things. I mean, and, and then we've had kind of a back, you know, uh, not not able to get tablets, you know, and so that's kind of delayed some things. Uh, the other thing, from my persp perspective, is the data management. You know, we're getting a lot of information. It's mm -hmm. kind of in a fairly clunky state right now. Cami's team is working on streamlining that, which you know, hopefully, uh, using uh, Salesforce, which is a little bit more robust and, and secure. Um, I think that that'll help a lot. Um, those are the things off the top of my head. Those are kind of the key challenges. You know, the communication with the partners. You, know, you got several folks involved between CTN Age. The, the referring partner, the trainers, you know, just that that whole communication uh, stream sometimes can be a little challenging, but we can work, we're working it. Well, we are at the end of our presentation and this has been extremely informative. And I think what I've learned is you guys are doing some really great work, but you probably use some help, right? So could you use some volunteers and donations and other people serving y'all? What kind of oh. needs do you have? Always. So uh, we're revamping our, uh, our webpage, just FYI, for, for the lab and um, about to send out a newsletter. So if folks aren't um, uh, on their newsletter list for the lab or, or, or age, then sign up. Okay. Uh, keep, 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 we'll, I'm going to try to keep up, keep uh, the newsletter going to kind of here's the latest things happening with the age computer lab. And one of them is always going to be asking for trainers and, and, and volunteers that you could sign up if you've got an interest in, uh, in doing that. Um, so that'll be out there a little bit more um, visibly uh, moving forward. And of course, you always need money, right, Cami? Yep. Can people make always. donations? Yeah. Right. Age would love for you to contribute. And you could always contribute to CGEN. Uh, but this is a very local initiative, and if folks are, are here in Central Texas and they want to support older adults, give it to Age. Age will put it to good use. The, the cost of the program is, uh, depending on if we need to help them sign up for internet or not, can cost anywhere between $750 and $825. If we're buying the tablet, setting it up, shipping it, booklet, trainer, program manager, dealing with all the data analysis. Like it's a lot, it's a robust program that's made specifically for people who otherwise would not be getting online. And certainly there's other solutions that are less expensive, but this is a really great program that helps those folks who just aren't gonna get online any other way. 
So yes, we'll take your money. I mean, we being aged. But that's a good point uh, that you brought up because again, CTM has been kind of the, the taking the lead on getting the funding and the and those kind of things. We've been kind of managing it here, Central Texas. But I think moving forward, we're looking to get age funding uh, for some for this program, and we're in the process of doing that now. Uh, every every little bit helps. So yeah. And if there's another agency interested in rolling out a similar program themselves, then that's where they would talk to me. Okay, great. Because you have all the training materials and things right. like that. So they could be part yeah. of it. Yeah, don't reinvent we'll the wheel. You don't have to. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. We, we even went a little bit late. Thank you for everybody who stayed a little bit longer to hear more about this wonderful program. It's been a huge problem that has really... Uh, it's come to a head, you know, during COVID. We really got to see how people were not being well served um, because they didn't have technology. So we're so happy that you guys have been helping our older adults in the Austin area. And thank you for attending today. I'll say my adieu to you. And then uh, if you guys don't mind, go ahead and go off video and sound. Thank you again. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then we you. have about, thank you, Cammie. Thank you, Sylvan. It was nice to meet you both. Uh, so our next session will